You ever been to a fatality fire site before? And I try to visit them whenever I'm near one. Just seeing the actual site helps me understand a lot better what really happened. And this South Canyon fire site is definitely one worth studying. You know, the military does this type of thing as formal training. They'll go to the site of a battle and analyze it and study what happened and figure out what factors affected the outcome. Historic battles are considered valuable learning tools. We need to do more of that in the fire management business. Almost there. The history of our business is full of battles we lost and lessons to be learned. <sighs> we didn't even have a history till after the 1910 fires up in northern Idaho. 78 firefighters lost their lives in those fires. And that's when the federal government finally started to develop a fire suppression policy and budget some money to battle forest fires. When a fire started, they'd just hire people off of logging crews, ranches, or right off the streets of the nearest town. It wasn't until the 1930s the Civilian Conservation Corps started the first organized crews. And they were hard workers, but they didn't have any formalized fire training like we have today. Well, between the 1933 fire at Griffith Park in California and the 1937 Blackwater Fire in Wyoming, 40 more firefighters died. Over 100 others were injured. That's when we started to develop specialized fire training for the Civilian Conservation Corps. Fire's not an easy thing to understand. And one of the reasons I come to places like this is to try and figure out why a fire burned the way it did. You know, back in the 1940s, smoke jumpers and hotshot crews started showing up on the scene. But they didn't understand much more than the CCC boys did about how a fire burns. And because they didn't understand fully all the factors that'll make some fires just get up and run, 13 firefighters died at the 1949 Man Gulch Fire up in Montana. It was after that we started to do a lot of research and gather piles of data on fire behavior. You see, we thought if we could anticipate the way a fire was going to behave, we could increase safety on the fire line. But we were still losing battles. Right on the heels of Man Gulch, there were two more major fatality fires in California. In 1953, 15 firefighters died on the Rattlesnake Fire, and in 56, 11 more died on the Inaha Fire. It was becoming pretty clear to us that we needed to do a lot more to help out the people pounding the ground. So a standard list of do's and don'ts was developed. And that's where we came up with our 10 standard firefighting orders and the 13 situations that shout watch out. As time went on, we figured we were starting to get a handle on most of our major safety concerns. Then along came the Loop Fire in 66 and the Canyon Fire in 68, both in Southern California and both nearly carbon copies of the Inaha Fire. Once again, we disregarded lessons from the past and 19 firefighters paid for it with their lives. By the end of the 60s, smoke jumpers and hot shots had been around for over 20 years. But as these fires proved, all that special training didn't make them immune from ignoring the past. So we developed even more do's and don'ts, and that became our downhill line construction checklist. Hey, even in my career, we've lost way too many battles by simply not paying attention to what's gone on in the past. Four firefighters died in the 1971 Romero fire in California. That started a nationwide push for a radio cash system and a fire line qualification system. Then in 1976, just five years later, the Battleman Creek Fire, about 20 miles down the valley right over here, claimed another three firefighters. That's when it became mandatory to carry fire shelters onto the fire line. And more special guidelines were developed in the form of the common denominators. The 1980s brought a rash of fire shelter deployments. 
And then in 1996, more firefighters were killed on the Dude Fire in Arizona. It was obvious that modern technology alone was not going to eliminate fatality fires. And we began to move toward more simplified safety guidelines using the LCES system. But these are just the dramatic fires, the ones that cost a lot of lives and cause the fire organizations to react in some pretty dramatic ways. We need to remember that there were literally hundreds of other fatality fires involving one or two lives that have been forgotten along the way. Fires where the same safety guidelines were disregarded over and over again. How can we keep forgetting? Here we are at South Canyon, where another 14 firefighters lost their lives in 1994. Once again, elite firefighters. Once again, repeated mistakes. Once again, calls for change. And once again, quickly forgotten. You know, the South Canyon fire isn't any more tragic than any of these other fires I've mentioned. It's just more recent. The one thing we need to remember is to use the lessons from the past so we don't have to keep relearning them the hard way. <laughs>